Nice, nearly finished. I think I'll just put a little bit of highlight on this edge here just to nothing happening. I'm going to press a little bit harder. Oh, nothing's happening. Just, uh, yeah. What is the point of this pencil? So I really love my Polychromos pencils, but at first the white one can seem like it's too transparent to be of much use for anything. Well, I paid too much for this pencil not to use it. So today I'm going to share with you my techniques for protecting the white of the paper for things sort of like subtle highlights or hairs or whiskers using my white polychromos and I'm going to compare it to my Prismacolor to show you why I think this is the best pencil for the job. So we've already established that trying to put this white colour on top of other layers is essentially pointless. It's just not really going to change the colour at all. So at the start of every piece that I do, I like to plot out my highlights in advance. So in a situation like this where I might like to have a really light little highlight, what I'm going to do is come in first with my white pencil and if there's going to be a really strong highlight, I'm going to put quite a lot of this down. Now I'm using some pretty firm pressure here, there's actually a fair bit on the paper and I'll lighten up a little bit and just get a little bit of that on the paper first. It's very hard to see, I'm sorry, but this will become really noticeable in a second. So now I'm just going to go over and use exactly the same colours I used for this one and we'll see what sort of different effect I can get. So as you can see, by planning a little bit in advance and laying down a bit of white pigment to protect those highlights, I've been able to create a much brighter area on this sphere than I ever could have achieved by trying to lay in a highlight when the other colours were already down. Next I'll show you how I use this method of protecting the paper to get fine white lines on a dark background. So let's say there's an area of a drawing where you want some really strong white lines up against a dark background. Well, I'm going to show you how I use my white polychromos to achieve that effect and I'm also going to show you the difference between using a white Prismacolor pencil and why I really think the polychromos is the best for this job. So I'm just going to stick with the idea that we're doing the whiskers of an animal and um, so I'm just going to do some quick lines here. I've got a pretty well sharpened pencil and I'm going to be pressing into my paper pretty hard, um, hard enough to leave lines dug into the paper but certainly not hard enough to break the tip of my pencil. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Can we see those? Yeah that's not too bad. And just for a comparison I'm going to use a Prismacolor pencil to do the same thing. I'll give that a quick sharpen. Not too much because it, oh, it broke. Bloody hell. Okay. That's the main reason that these ones don't work, because they break too much. They're very soft, so when I do dig into the paper, I won't, the pencil won't actually dig in and it just leaves a lot of pigment down. But I'll show you the difference. And just for one final comparison, I'm just going to dig into the paper with the tip of a fountain pen. I don't love this fountain pen, so don't, don't hate me too much for ruining it. Um, and just etch in like that. Marjorie. Okay, so I'm just going to go over the top of all of these lines with a dark indigo pencil and try and get it as dark as I can and we'll see how much we can bring up those white lines when I'm finished. So we can see here by just going over the top that the polychromos, especially where I dug in at first, where my pressure was the hardest, has resisted that dark colour pretty well. Um, up here you can still see where it's going to go over, but I can get rid of that by blending it out. Um, the Prismacolor has really just sort of changed colour and gone a really sort of milky consistency that you know, could be useful in some situations, but it wouldn't look very good as a whisker or something like that. And the etched paper has actually held up pretty well. It's got some really nice fine lines um, and you could get some really nice effects using that technique. Um, but I'm going to blend these all out now with some thinners and we'll see how bright I can bring these whites back up. 
Okay, now that I've quickly blended out the background, I can take a little bit of thinners and I can actually sort of rub some of that dark off the polychromos pencil. I just keep dipping it in there, rubbing off any sort of excess on the side here. You've got to keep um, brushing it off because that pigment will just keep going back over the top, but I can just work at it slowly, brush, get rid of the excess, brush, get rid of the excess. Um, for the record, I'm not just removing the pigment from the paper. Um, I can't do that to the same degree. Where I haven't put the white paper, I can lift it a little bit, but I'll never get that upright at all. Okay. So we'll try that with the Prismacolor. And the white pigment in the Prismacolor sort of spreads a lot easier. So instead of getting nice clean white lines, it just sort of makes this milky color. It will lighten somewhat, but it, it just doesn't have that same clean effect. and sort of stained all of that indigo a really sort of funny milky colour. And finally you can see on the etched paper that using the thinners has just pushed it sort of into those grooves. So if you would like to use that etching technique um, you definitely can't use any thinners, it just sort of pushes it down and actually makes for little darker lines which can be a nice effect in and of itself. Now that I'm done lifting it as much as I can, I can sort of use that white pencil back over the top. Just bring it up just a little bit more. If I use the white pencil on the dark background itself, I, I, I don't get anything at all. You can just sort of get that yucky, milky colour. Use the Prismacolor just to... Yeah. That works a little bit better, but it's still that yucky, milky colour. So you can see there that by protecting that paper, I can keep some pretty bright white lines up against even the darkest of backgrounds. So here I'll show you a little quick time lapse of me actually putting this technique into practice. On this little collaboration piece I'm doing with some other artists, I'm drawing a bunch of tiny little salt crystals on a really dark background. So the first thing I do on this piece is to map out the brightest areas of those salt crystals with my white polychromos pencil. I'm pressing the hardest where I want it to be the brightest, so that's mostly around the edges and on little ridges of the crystals. And then I'm pressing a little lighter on areas where I want that background colour to show through the crystal. This part can feel a little bit tricky because it can be a little bit easy to lose your pace with that white on white, but I just keep checking my work from different angles to make sure I've got those whites where I want them to be. Once I'm satisfied with the amount of white that I have down and I'm pretty certain that it's going to protect the paper, it's then that I'll go on top with the darkest colours and I just colour straight over the top of everything. Now I am using a light touch with that dark pencil, I'm certainly not grinding it into that white, but I'm definitely not being too careful or picking around the outside, I'm pretty much just colouring straight over the top because I know I can use my thinners later to lift that darker colour off the areas I want to brighten back up. 
Now, I know this piece looks a little strange at the moment. Um, it'll make a lot more sense when it's put with the other artist's work. If you'd like to see how it turns out, um, head on over to my Facebook page where I'll be posting the end result. And finally, I'd just like to show you how well the white polychromos can work on a textured paper. Um, this is a Canson Me Tense text paper. Um, it's designed for pastels. It's got a really sort of sanded textured surface. And um, I've got the two circles here using the same colours that I used in the original demonstration. Um, this one's been blended out with thinners and this one's just been sort of blended out using the pencils themselves. And you can see, even though I've already got this surface pretty well saturated with colour, I can still use my polychromos pen, I'll get some blue on it, um, and I can still layer even more of that and still lighten the colour. Unlike what happens with a sort of traditional surface paper, the texture surface will allow much, much more pigment to go down. And on this, I can actually layer the white colour over the top of my darks. Um, you can see here where I've tested out on a swatch of that same indigo paper. Um, just going straight over the top has given me a fairly light result. Um, but on this last corner here, I've actually lifted up that with a little bit of eraser first. I'll just go down. Just sort of load that right up. It does go through a fair bit of pencil, but you get a good result pretty quickly. And I can actually... And I can actually go fairly easily straight over the top with my white. And if I want it really bright, I can just erase it back a little bit. Which is something you can't do on a sort of traditional paper. And go straight white over dark. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, I did try this with my polychrome, uh, sorry, Prismacolor pencil, and because of its waxiness, it just sort of builds up and clumps up in the tooth of that sanded paper, whereas the polychromos just blends really nicely on there. Um, I haven't done a full piece with this technique yet, I only sort of discovered it as I was testing out for this video, but I'm definitely going to use this in the future. So there you have it. That's how I use my white polychromos pencil on my colour pencil pieces. Please feel free to leave a like or a comment if this video has helped you out at all, or if you have any other ways in which you like to use this pencil. And if you'd like to see more of my work, why not hit that subscribe button? Thanks for watching guys.